Hi, I'm Lippy. And I'm Grumpy. Together we're Lippy and Grumpy Do Podcasting. In this episode, Line of Duty Disappointment, Deep Fried Caterpillar Cake, Round as Team Names and Worldwide Gnomes Shortage. Now, Grumpy, did you see the final of Line of Duty? I did. And I haven't been so disappointed since my A-level results. <laughs> we sat on the sofa and looked at one another and said, mm, was it really worth seven seasons? My feeling was is that because there was an extra episode in this series, that he forgot about it. And then, a bit like a kid doing his homework on the bus on the way to school, wrote it on the way to the BBC. Maybe. Well, I think we are going to watch Line of Duty from the start. The first series are absolutely brilliant. And uh, personally, I think he decided to turn it more into a documentary at the end with Mm. an important moral question, which is not the reason I watched it. (laughs) (laughs) To be honest, I wanted to be entertained with gun shootouts and crazy escapes and things and And twisty, turny stories. The problem is, is once you go, oh, that wasn't very good, you start picking holes in it. Yeah. I have to say, there was a whole load around messages between various people in the organised crime group. And they're going to use proper encryption. You're not going to be able to intercept one of their messages. No. So you start to look at it and the plot seems to fall apart. Mm. You just go, oh, I'm not watching that again. That's a shame. But I highly recommend the first few series. They were brilliant. Anyway, last week you talked about King Josh. Yes. Turns out, I found an article which mm. I posted. The winner was four years old, not nine. Oh, that's even which cuter. Makes, I don't know, it, well, that's not a word I would use. But yes, it, it, was, it was superb. Um, and he definitely was four, mm. looking at the picture in the paper. Oh, okay. I'm so bad with children's looks and ages. I definitely thought he was nine. <laughs> oh, so you hadn't read it. You just I'd seen the him. I thought he was nine. And also following on a theme of the last few weeks, the Colin the Caterpillar cake. Mm, which I had one at the weekend. Yes, you did. Yes, because, oh, yes, it was your birthday. It was my birthday. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, we had, you had happy birthday or happy mirth day birthday. from Davros and from the Screaming Tomato, oh, which was very nice. Oh, thank you. Day. We thank you both. Anyway, back to the Colin the Caterpillar cake. Mm. Turns out there's a chip shop in East Kilbride near Glasgow that has decided to deep fry one. Yes. No. Oh. That's just, that's bonkers. That would be good. Have you ever had a deep fried Mars bar? No. And interestingly, mm. your okay. mother, who is Scottish, hasn't either. You should try. They are. You, you can taste the badness in it as you're eating it. But, oh, it's good. Doesn't sound wise to me. Mm. So, anyway, if you fancy a Colin the Caterpillar deep fried cake, you know where to go. Now, following on from the disappointment that is Line of Duty, there is another series on BBC, which I watched on the iPlayer, called Bent Coppers. And it covers the probably late 60s and certainly the 70s. And it was was a brilliant, brilliant documentary. And... Mostly because of the number of classic cars in it. Or no. now classic cars, which at the time were just ordinary cars, but nevertheless classic yes. now. And it, it was very interesting because having grown up through that period, you're not sort of aware of things going on. Mm. I, I remember being very aware of armed robberies, particularly with Secure Corps fans, uh, because one of the scout leaders was a Secure Corps driver and he inevitably got caught up in one of these. Oh, God. So it seemed there would be you know, there would be one or two of these locally, pretty much a month, and crazy, which is something you tend not to hear of nowadays. I, I don't know why. So that's highly recommended if you like a, a little bit of nostalgia, which, yes. as my mate says, is not what it used to be. <laughs> then uh, <laughs> this doesn't then, yes. sound like it, that's a bad thing <laughs> this time round. <laughs> no, po- poss- possibly not. No, possibly not. Anyway, you um, you're playing rounders for your your work aren't you yes and there's we some are. interesting oh names. my god there are some hysterical names so i work in the uh, medical industry these days so um when i had well when i first saw the name some of the names they were quite boring and plain and then i got a message through from one of my colleagues who's also new she joined the same time i did saying 
have you seen what our team is called? And I was like, no, I haven't got that far yet. So I work for the urology department specifically. And our team name is You're in Trouble Now. <laughs> oh, that is that is genius, actually. So, so good, honestly. And then once I noticed that Weird had a funny one, I started looking at some of the other ones. And oh my God, they are hilarious. But I some of them are touch on the line. <laughs> In touch. Ah. Oh, so um, one of the other departments, I'm sure you can guess who, called themselves a stroke of luck, <laughs> which bit hit and miss, very funny. Uh, another team is at your cervix. Truly good. Yep. So I assume that's gynecology. Who else do we have that was uh, bloody disorderly was another one I enjoyed very much. Yes, that's very good. Very good. I think medical people tend to have a bit of a gallows humour and I suspect it's because they're living with life and death on a daily basis which mere mortals tend not to do yes like i do um meetings where we discuss patients and if you have a funny name it brings joy to that meeting because the meetings are quite a bit down sometimes because obviously you're talking about people that aren't very well um but yes if you have a funny name we love that that's great (laughs) funny enough i was thinking about meetings the other day and I used to come out with this, well, this is all well and good, but what would Jack Bauer do in a meeting when there, there's no decision being made? <laughs> which, And I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about Kingsman as well. This is going off topic somewhat. Mm. And in the first one, he talks about his idol, JB. Yes. Which, depending on your age, could be James Bond or Jack Bauer or Jason Bourne. Mm. And I was thinking, isn't it odd that those three characters all, all have the same initials? Hmm. And what's the next one going to be? Maybe it's a conspiracy. Maybe it is. <laughs> Should Maybe look it into is. that. Yeah, Can especially join that Johnny English time. doesn't fit into that that pattern. But. I also he doesn't fit into that type of person either. He was more of a accidental spy rather than an actual spy. <laughs> oh, I don't know how you can say that. The man was a genius. Yes, that's like me being a spy. <laughs> I think me being a secret agent. Yes, I see where you're going with that, yes. A lot of mistakes, a lot of accidents, but I can still do it. (laughs) Good. Anyway, when's the Rounders tournament? Uh, A couple of Wednesdays, I believe. Not this one, the one after. And are you in training? No, no one has time for training. Just rock up. One of the girls is bringing a bottle of Prosecco. (laughs) Yes, the other thing medics are very good at. (laughs) No, it was your birthday. It was Monday. my birthday. I had such a good day. Do you know, because I feel like last year was a no birthday, because obviously we were in full lockdown. Oh. This year I got a half birthday because we were uh, we were allowed to do a lot more things. And obviously I actually got to come and we had breakfast with you guys outside, which was lovely because I didn't even get to do that last year. We were fully no, locked true. down. Yeah. Um, so I had a half birthday. So next year, I feel like I need to go all out because next year will be my first full birthday in two years. That's a good idea. Mm. You had an interesting present, though. I did. Due to uh, bubble wrap and a little bit of dyslexia, it was slightly incorrectly named. It did. And I did pop her a message and let her know. What I <laughs> so this was for the frozen camper who it was, was a guest ooh, many, many moons ago. Yes, yeah, a lovely present. I I really... It was a really lovely little ceramic pot that you put oil in to then dip bread in and she had also bought me a bottle of oil i think it was rosemary oil or it's scent uh, scented it's not scented is it it's flavored uh, no, that's it's the word pimped up pimped, pimped up pimped up oil which is called bread dipper but my dyslexia through the bubble wrap read it as beard dripper and for the yeah. first few moments, my brain was like, what would I use br- br- a beard dripper for? <laughs> I yeah, definitely so don't have pot a beard. Going? <laughs> I suppose it drips into the pot. Yeah. So um, relieved when I reread it and realised that it was oil for my bread rather than <laughs> for my non-existent beard. Unless she's trying to tell me something. We also talked about who you share birthdays with. Yes. And Davros admitted he shares his birthday with Saddam Hussein. Slightly unfortunate. Not sure I'd brag about that one. (laughs) No, I wouldn't. No. No. He's also got some good theories about um, the programme that we don't talk about anymore. 
So having made some outrageous suggestions a couple of weeks ago, it was completely wrong <laughs> and has a whole bunch more from, um, well, just, well, just stuff he's made up, really. <laughs> but, uh, but I, but I guess if the writer can go back and throw a uh, couple of second clip from series one that pointed at HB and H, then why not Davros? Bring them on. Bring them on. We had a couple of things I had on the list that got bumped for a few weeks, but I thought uh, we've probably got enough time in this this week's mm-hmm. podcast to talk about them. First one was going back to the Ever Given getting wedged in the Suez Canal and causing all sorts of chaos. Yes. Apparently, there is now a garden gnome shortage. <laughs> Now, I don't know whether it's because the garden gnomes were on the Ever Given or whether they were in the boats trying to get past the Ever Given. How strange. Yeah. How and did interesting you come to, to this? Did you find an article on it rather than trying to buy a garden gnome? Well, funny enough, I, I recently read an article about garden gnomes, which, and I thought, actually, I haven't seen one for a long while. I think mm. when the opportunity arises and I see a good quality one, I'm going to start investing in some. Oh, no. And then this article just popped up because I look for weird bits of news mm. throughout the week. But I read today there's all sorts of problems with the electronic chips for cars as well. Oh. That have got uh, delayed, I suspect, through so that. Might be for other reasons. The ones that don't need keys. No, I mean there's chips in all, all sorts of cars. You know, engine management systems. Oh, and, I see. Yeah, you, know, the, the, you know, your car, for example, is full of little bits of computers mm. that, that do various things. Yes. Which, uh, yeah. So new cars are they're struggling a little bit because mm. obviously they've got even more electronics. Speaking of new cars, we're going to be test driving the new electric Mazda car in a couple of weekends' time. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, well, uh, not me personally, but Chris, when he renews his car, wants to go for the new electric Mazda one. Oh, so wow. they've offered him a test drive. So we get it for a Brilliant. whole day. We're going to see how far we can take it before we run out of electricity. <laughs> yeah, you want to really be able to circle back and run out at home. Yes, no, that's what we're going to plan a route so we end up back close enough yes, to the house. Just run up and down the road a few <laughs> times until it, until it goes. Yeah. Oh, well, that'll be exciting. Mm-hmm. I look forward to hearing about yeah. that. I'm slightly. Uh, Slightly confused about yeah, electric vehicles, electric vehicles, to be honest. Yeah, I think, so um, we'll see. Hydrogen we'll see might be like. the, the answer, but it would be really interesting what it's like. I mean, my experience of them, are, they're phenomenally quiet, mm. really, really quiet. And they put a lot of effort into reducing the wind noise and making it a, a quite a new, pleasant experience because you haven't got the noise and vibration of yeah. the engine, engine and gearbox and stuff like that. Now, I was quite pleased to see in the paper that, if you recall, Handforth Parish Council a while back yes. had the infamous Jackie Weaver, Jackie Weaver. and uh, the behaviour in that meeting mm, by some of the elected was appalling. Um, the The worst protagonist in that has actually stepped down from the council. Oh, that's good. Which I think is very good, and it's as you say, it's unacceptable behaviour. Whether it's on Zoom or not, you don't speak to people like that. So I was very pleased to see that that particular gentleman had gone from the council. Yes, that is good. I mean, if that's his attitude, he can't be doing much good for the people of that parish. No. In my view. So, yeah, so that was a bit of good news. And then there seems to have been quite a lot of adverts on the television. And it's possibly because I only watch reruns of Top Gear on the telly. For you buy a lot of ticket, raffle ticket, and you could win a massively expensive car. Now, a gentleman in his early 20s, I know he was 27 in fact, Oh. He won a Mitsubishi, which I always have trouble saying, Evo 10, I believe it was, or 9, worth about £25,000. Nice. 24 hours after he bought, or after he collected it, it was scrap. It ran out of talent and basically whacked both ends of it into a motorway oh, Armaco. No. Which is a, I, just an absolute pity. I have driven a rally spec Evo once in the forest in Yorkshire mm. and it was it was a superb car apart from it kept jumping out of second gear <laughs> it, <laughs> they, they do that um it was just brilliant I mean it's just so much power there so it's not surprising he got into a bit of trouble with it yeah, but, uh, yeah too 24 much, hours a bit too much car for man I think that's probably the case probably got very excited and was like let's see how fast I can go well, there is. He's of that age, I have mm. to say, where you tend to do things like that, and then yes. hopefully live to regret it. And the other bit of news that I quite liked was in Dorset, which is an area we know very well along the mm. coast between 
Swanage and Studland yeah. at an area called Harry's Rocks or Old Harry's Rocks. Although Old Harry doesn't exist anymore, he's gone into the sea, so it's Lady Harry's Harry. wife apparently. Yeah, Lady yeah. Harry. So somebody managed to fall off the cliff. No. Um, yes, it's a 28, 28 year old tourist fell off the cliff, uh, dropped 115 foot oh. into four foot of water and survived. My God. Oh, I saw this. I didn't realise it was a, um, old Harry, though. Yeah, I saw, because I get a, well, the Swanage lifeboat tweets when mm. they, they're on a shout. So I saw that come up over the weekend. And That's there was something crazy. About, so. what, what was he, he, she? Is it he or she? It's a he. he. It's a he. What on earth was he doing to get that, to be able to fall off the edge? It's quite obvious where the edge of this cliff is. It is quite obvious. I have a theory. Because there's a bit in the article here that said, my phone was in my pocket. Now, people of that age mm. tend to walk everywhere with their <laughs> phone in their hand. So the fact it was in his pocket must have affected his balance, which is <laughs> why he then off fell the off. Edge. Exactly. He's used to having a bit of weight on that side. It didn't work. He had the foresight as he went over, because he's desperate trying to grip onto grass and what have you. He pushed himself away from the rocks, That's... which is what saved him. So he fell mm. into deeper water than he would have done. Because it was very rock, instead of hitting the rocks on the way down as well. That's impressive, because I feel like in that moment, I would just be panicked. I wouldn't think to do anything like that. It's interesting. I was watching a video on YouTube um, for light aircraft. So there's a guy who had built this light aircraft, highly experienced pilot, Flew it for the first time and he decided to fly across the Grand Canyon and do a sort of a bit of loop and then come mm. back up again. And he got into some bad weather, so there was no visibility whatsoever, which, I mean, just watching the video is terrifying on its own. Yeah. If you're flying, then, yeah. What he should have done, which he admits in the video, is to turn around at that point and not carry on. But he didn't. So then there was a sort of a catalogue of problems that happened and one of them was that the he's used to flying in the hot weather now he's in the middle of cloud in relatively cold weather and the engine carbs start to ice up uh, so the petrol starts to freeze as it goes in and the thing will start splattering so although the engine's running absolutely fine he's got all sorts of alarms going off and mm. what have you meanwhile he's talking to the tower so they're guiding him in it's about 20 miles he had to fly uh, more or less like this but he talks about the panic and it's not obvious in the video that he is panicking. Yeah. But he says, I was absolutely panicking at That's this point. one of those moments where you th you genuinely think you're going to die. Yes, and it's interesting. When you look at commercial pilots, you look at um, the one that landed on the river, mm. um, the Sully is the film. Yes, yeah. The, the co-pilot, the, the first officer, was still going through the checklist to restart the engines when they hit the water. He was so focused on doing that job. You... And you'll find that they, there's a friend of mine who was a commercial pilot, um, flew 747s. And he said the first thing you do is aviate, so you continue to fly the plane. Yeah. Then you navigate, you try to work out where to go, where you are. And then you communicate, he said, in that order. And interestingly, this pilot, this light aircraft pilot said what he forgot to do was aviate. Oh, uh, OK. Well, he skipped the other two and started panicking. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, not brilliant. But to have the foresight to push yourself away from that cliff, I saved him. There's no mm. choice about it. So it's obviously a, a chap that can do well in a crisis. Yeah, definitely. So he's got three broken ribs, which is quite comfortable, and a punctured lung, but got away. That's not bad for now, it? falling no. that far into four foot of no. water. No, 115 foot is. Um, I've only ever had. Whack. I've only ever had that feeling twice where I thought this is I'm going to die now. But thankfully, neither of them. I was like. There was no extra thing involved. It, I was walking and I was asleep in a tent. How did you think you were going to die when you were asleep? I was, a, oh, sorry, a I was in a tent. I had woken up. Oh, is this the so-called bear incident? It was a bear. Did you see the bear? Well, I wasn't going to get out of the tent, was I? So, well, it's Schrodinger's bear because it's there and not there. You Honestly, it. it was there. I talked myself through every possibility of what it could have been. And there is no way it could have been anything other than a bear. Did you consider a hobo? Yes. Well, it was free, like in the middle of the mountains in Yosemite. There's not, you're not going to get a hobo. We had other tents well, around us. There was you know there's going to be a source of food. There was definite tree scratching and like the weight of the steps. You could hear them. And there's no nothing else that could have made that those noise of steps and scratched the tree as high as it scratched the tree. Like there were fresh claw marks on the tree the next day. Well, look at it this way: if you if you were homeless 
and you know it's a good target, or you even if you're just a, a bit peckish, absolutely, you give the impression there is a bear outside I mean, when there isn't. Because it will terrify people into staying in the tent. You can then go through their food. It wasn't just me, though. I was, it wasn't like I was on my own. My friend it was in definite agreement because she mm. woke up because I sat up because I wanted to try and work out where it was because you know when you're lying down sometimes you can't work out distances of sounds and she woke up and she told me to be quiet and go back to sleep it was a chipmunk and then it started scratching again and she just looked at me and was like that's not a chipmunk (laughs) to be honest people telling you to be quiet and go back to sleep is not unusual well normally I sleep like a baby so well up four times a night for (laughs) feeding that's such a weird saying, isn't it? Because babies don't sleep yeah. through the night. Oh, you did. You slept very well. I slept very well. Hmm. To this day, I will sleep a good 10 hours without stirring. Well, I've had many, many near-death experiences, and unfortunately it was all to do when you were learning to drive. <laughs> Cheers. Anyway, moving on. We talked about a very long time ago. Uh, people picking one flaw in somebody's argument or something mm. they're doing, and and which then just it. throws the whole thing out, which is obviously nonsense. And it's a rather unpleasant, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a rather unpleasant way of looking at things. I found a brilliant quote which says, Your anecdote is a data point, not a statistic. Ooh. Which I thought was very good, just because one small thing is. The issue is. Different. When people argue like that, they pick on one thing, they're not normally intelligent enough t- to understand that phrase. Didn't you say that's uh, how you argue? Yeah. So you don't understand that phrase. I Do argue I like that because it? I know it annoys people. And then it normally means that I win the argument because they give up. <laughs> Just beaten down by <laughs> carbon dioxide. <laughs> I don't argue that often with people, to be honest. I'm I'm not an argumentative person unless I'm being told I'm wrong and I know I'm right. Well, even if you think you're right. It takes a lot for me to, to, to admit that I've said something wrong. Anyway, where anyway. are my pyjamas? <laughs> they're fixed. Where are they? Well, they're fixed and I was very stressed when I was leaving the house the other day and I, I forgot to bring them along to give them back to you. <sighs> Just dreadful excuse. Oh, well. It was a dreadful excuse, to be honest. And as soon as I left the house, as soon as I realised I'd left them in the house, I honestly debated driving. I'd driven for 20 minutes. I debated going back to get them because I was like, he's not going to be <laughs> impressed with my reason why I haven't brought them. <laughs> no, very true. Very true. I just assume you haven't quite finished them and they're, uh, they're still to be done. So I, I look forward to seeing those. They'll be with you next weekend. A couple of weeks. So Maybe I assume you'll... me a message before I leave to yeah. remind me. <laughs> I assume you're packing up the sewing room yes. as you're on the move. Yeah, uh, we haven't officially started boxing anything up yet, but I went to get my hair cut today. Thank you for telling me it looks nice. Oh, it okay. looks nice, sorry. Thank you. Um, and I thought, well, well, as we're moving, I might as well go and get my hair cut where we're moving to because it's only a 20-minute drive from us anyway. And actually, the hairdressers I went to is round the co- like literally round the corner from the house. Um, oh, that's handy. Yeah, really handy. Like it would take me five minutes to walk there. So obviously, I did a little slow drive past the house, and there mm-hmm. are boxes in the windows, which means they've started oh, to pack, which good. is really exciting. So I saw those and got really excited in my car, and I was like, I'm by myself, but I'm excited. Um, so now I feel like we need to start packing. <laughs> Do you have a moving date yet? No, we don't. We're waiting on a few documents that they need to send to our solicitors, and we're waiting for our solicitors to contact us about our remortgage, which is doing our heads in because it's the last thing and they just won't come back to us. Oh. But other than that, they've been great. So, yeah, I think we need to start packing things that we don't use often. Well, you're, you're talking weeks, aren't you, really? Mm. So, it's probably worth. Because I think once a jump start I don't, on. I think we'll get the date, and the date will be like two weeks time. I don't think it's yeah. going to be like a date within a month. It's going to be a date, and mm. then it's going to be moving within a couple of weeks. 
so we really we probably should but we do have the luxury thankfully of having this house and that house for like a week or two so if we yeah. can't move everything straight away at least we've we can move pretty much everything and then come back for a few bits if we need to oh well that's good that mm. that takes a little bit of stress out of the yes, situation and, and if you would like to come and help pack some boxes and move some boxes no. that'd be great oh, okay no. <laughs> moving's fine not packing don't do packing. We're going for smaller boxes that have, or so that they're lighter. More boxes, but lighter boxes. That's much easier all round. Oh uh, yeah, and, that's and what packing the got. van as well. It's it's easier. Mm. Well, I've not ventured near the allotment. Uh, the weather this week has been dreadful. Up and down. <laughs> and, uh, yes, but I do spend a bit of time with the master, and I've got all the the windows sorted now. Ooh. Although I do have a small pile of leftover screws, which is a that's bit worrying. Disturbing. I mean, some of them I know about. It, there was an odd third market um, central locking system that stopped working. Mm. So I took those bits out. But there were some little screws. I'm like, where have they come from? A uh, bit of a mystery, really. So, Yes. But they're small, so they can't be holding anything important. So that's that's good. I mean, ooh. <laughs> yeah, quite. But it, it often happens. <laughs> you know, I've been fiddling with cars for over 40 years. And... More often than not, you end up with a few bits left over. Mm, let us know how that goes mm. then. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we're already, we've got a classics on the drive in a couple of weeks on Sunday the 16th, I think it is. So, yeah. uh, so we're all ready for that. Hopefully the weather will be nice. Fingers crossed. Yep, so we've got 80 odd cars within the village. I know. Do you do a map? Yeah, there is a map with a vague location of them. Obviously, we, what we didn't yeah. want to do is print a map that's uh, suitable for car things. Where all of the classic cars yeah. are going to be for the yeah, next exactly. few days. <laughs> so, And then there's a, a, a parade up and down the high street um, oh, well, late afternoon, which is very nice. Mm, Looking forward to that lovely. immensely. So, Lippy, is there a top tip for this week? There is. Top tip from the top brain of Lippy. Okay, the top brain. Does that mean there's a bottom brain? No, just a top brain. <laughs> So top is superfluous in that yeah. statement. <laughs> um, so I went to Top Golf for my birthday because it was my birthday. Oh, was it your birthday? That doesn't oh, know. gosh! Really good fun. We got to go upstairs. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, really cool. Also makes it easier because you're that little bit higher anyway. That's not the top tip. Anyway, the top tip is when attending Top Golf and not knowing how to hit a golf ball properly. Don't stand too close to the edge, or you will fall off. She didn't fall off, off, but she nearly fell off. (laughs) Very close. A lot of feet movement, shuffling, and then all of a sudden, a and jumped back onto the pad. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Funny. Yeah. Very funny indeed. So if you don't know how to do it, stay further back. Or go downstairs. Or go downstairs. But actually, if you go downstairs and you get close to the edge, there's a chance that somebody at the top hasn't hit it properly and it drops straight down. That's then... true. Or somebody's falling off the top on yeah, top of you. Or that. <laughs> the, neither of which is uh, is going to make your day, is it? No. So I have a fun fact. Oh, fun. Since 1211 AD, mm. the City of London has been paying rent to the Crown on the land it leased in the ceremony of quit rents whatever that might be the ceremony is so old the exact locations of the two pieces of land are no longer known this has continued for centuries and still continues the payment has never changed the city must pay two knives one blunt and one sharp six horseshoes and 61 nails please tell me this isn't still being paid yes apparently so I've not looked into it, so it might be complete hogwash. But The thing, the questions I have is, one, are they giving them the knives, horseshoes and nails, or or is it the monetary value of the knives? No, 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 that's the payment. That's so crazy. in 1211, that, that would have been currency. Yeah. Things like that would have been currency, because there's bartering. And it's iron and things like that. That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. But one, why one of the knives needs to be blunt and the other sharp is a bit of a mystery. And why 61 nails? If you've got six horseshoes... Is, is that how many nails to... you would put into the horseshoes to put the horseshoes into the feet? Well, you think it'd be divisible by six, which 61 isn't. One spare in case they drop one. Well, that's a possibility. <laughs> that is a distinct possibility. I think you need to look into this for next week because I want to know more. Well, you could look into it. I could look into it. 
I want to know The more. ceremony of the quit rents. You might have to text that to me because that's a lot of words. Well, you could listen to this podcast and then you'll know. Mm. Get an extra listener in for the week. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can help spread Lippy and Grumpy's view on life by leaving a review on your favourite podcast platform. If you're not sure how to leave a review, or if you download from Spotify, there's some help at lippyandgrumpy.uk slash review. And if you would like to get in touch, email podcast at lippyandgrumpy.uk. So it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from him. Goodbye. Goodbye.